Hey folks, welcome to another edition of Life's of Bluffs Random Questions with me, Matt Waldron, and a very, very special guest, author, businessman, and last year's Legends of Poker champion, Dan Harrington. How are you doing today, Dan? I'm doing fine. Nice meeting you. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, just a few things right off the bat. You just came out with a new series of books, Harrington on Cash Games, the blockbuster Harrington on Hold'em for the tournament series, those three books. Uh, did they ever broach the New York Times bestsellers list? Uh, well, they were reviewed favorably in the New York Times, so that, 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 was, a, that was a nice thing. And uh, both books were at one time ranked uh, together, Volume 1 and Volume 2, ranked 12 and 14th respectively on Amazon which was, uh, I was really proud of that, especially since six books ahead of that were all like one damn author, uh, Harry Potter. I mean, so otherwise I've been in the top ten. Uh, now you've got Harrington on Cash Games going on now, and uh, there's, there's another book in the works, I've heard? Uh, we're now gathering information to probably do a six max. Uh, we've been investigating the six max online. I've played it before. Now we're going to uh, show how you're supposed to play using the uh, data gathering information that's available online. All right. All right. Now, you've never done random questions before, so I'm going to break it down like this. Really, after this has almost nothing to do with poker except something funny that may have happened to you during a game or something of that nature. And we started off with some very easy personal questions like, if you could live the life of one fictional character, who would it be? A fictional character, huh? Mm-hmm. Gee, I don't know. Uh, I read, I read action. Maybe uh, a some bloodlove character or something like that. Uh, All right. But that's uh, normal male ego. That's nothing wrong with that. Cows, friend or foe? Friend when I eat them. There you go. If you could create a charity, what would it be called and what would it do? I think. Uh, a charity, I think, would be developed towards uh, world peace. That, I think that would be the most effective. I think that would encompass a lot of the other uh, charitable events. That's nice. Now, what would you go about doing with the charity to help bring about world peace? Uh, basically, you have to support a strong United Nations and its ability to disarm nations in the world. Very nice. Strangest thing that's ever happened to you while you're out on a date? Uh, let's see, what would that be? Strangest thing that ever happened to me out on a date. Sort of, the whole thing was sort of prosaic uh, in my existence, but I'm just trying to think, dredge back the memories. Um, and we have an R rating on the show, so you can be as lewd oh, okay. as you like. If you feel <laughs> well, like. I'd rather not be. <laughs> um, I really can't think of anything that was outlandish that ever occurred on a date. Really? Yeah, really. I mean, maybe normal, you know, normal things, but nothing that was totally outlandish. It's okay. It works out. Would you rather be better looking, luckier, richer? more or more talented at one particular item? Boy, I hate to, uh, I, 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 I'd like to have all of them, but you're saying I only get yeah, one. You only get one. one. Better looking, luckier, richer, or more talented at one particular thing? Well, you have to pick luckier because that will encompass all the other, uh, most of the other things. Good enough. Now there's one, this is Pretty philosophical. Are you a philosophical guy? No. Not at all? Not at all. Then we should get a very good answer on this. What is the meaning of life according to you in ten words or less? Getting through it fairly happy. Fair enough. What's under your bed? Air. All right. Craziest thing you've ever done on an airplane? Again. Nothing. Kind of vanilla? Uh, vanilla. I, 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 I never joined the Mile High Club, so I mean. Oh, well. <laughs> if you had a NASCAR sponsor, who would it be? 
I'm not even sure who the NASCAR sponsors are. I don't well, follow. You can it. pick whoever you want to be your sponsor. Oh, I see what you're saying. Someone that's pretty free and spending money, uh, maybe uh, maybe the Nike or something like that. I'm surprised they don't have one. <laughs> Most influential writer in your life, as you're an author too. That's an interesting question. What would be the most influential? Probably, I mean, the, the, for, for at least for business, there, there, it, it would be. Uh, there was a book put out by William Spitz, uh, Get Rich Slowly, years ago. I mean, as far as investing, etc., like that, as a philosophy towards investing. Mm -hmm. that, that was pretty effective. What's scarier right now, the real estate market or the future of the poker world? Um, both are pretty scary. I, I guess the real estate market wins by a nose right now, but long term, uh, that will come back, and I'm not sure the poker market will come back. Now, kind of on the same note, what is the strangest thing that poker celebrity has ever done to you? What's the strangest thing you've ever seen happen to you? Or just most ironic? Um, nothing really stands out there. I mean, I, I, they're all sort of pedestrian. Uh, I mean, uh, can't really think of anything. Boston finishes where in the AL East this year? Looks like they finished second, even though I wanted to be in first. That's all set. You get to pick the president from anybody. Who do you choose? Probably the person, one of the people that would be most impressive as president that could have run. Uh, would have been like Colin Powell. Been very nice. Now, Dan Harrington in 2012, could we see it? I'm just trying to, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I have one plan for uh, 2012. That's a, to be alive. That's my only main plan. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. What's your favorite stop on the tour? I'm not really on the tour that much. I imagine if it was... I imagine it would be something like Barcelona or something like that. Only well, I never played in Barcelona, but I have visited there, so that would be a, a great stop on the tour. I, I want to be in an interesting place. Uh, it's not so much the casino, but it's it, it, it's some interesting part of the country. You can't argue with Barcelona. Yeah, can you? it's a beautiful place. Pocket aces pre-flop or 15 outs on a flop. What does the master of strategy have to say? Um. Oh. Oh you, oh, you definitely want pocket aces on the flop. No, pocket aces pre-flop, 15 oh. outs on the flop. Oh, I see. Um, pocket aces pre-flop. All right. Where are the best poker players in the world from? Used to be in the United States, but they're getting pretty good overseas now, too. All right. You've led a pretty eventful life, been very successful. What's the greatest accomplishment you've had in your life? I think the ones I was proudest of is probably uh, winning like the Massachusetts State Championship in chess, something like that. Now, um, how does that compare to winning, say, the Legends of Poker last year? Um, well, the Legends of Poker, you have to understand, it, it came in a, a time in my life that I've had, I've done and been and done everything else. So even though it's a, a big accomplishment, uh, it's not like winning the uh, Mass State Championship was like the first big event. So that's that's why I think of it that way. Fair enough. Fair enough. Do you enjoy explosions? Thank you. As long as they're not happening around me. All right. If you could have one of the following and only one, which would you choose? The perfect cook, personal secretary, driver, housekeeper, masseuse, or bodyguard? Uh, cook. Cook. Solid. Would you rather play your best game against the top-notch player or your worst game against an average player? I'd 
rather play my worst game against a very weak player. All right. That's well, either an average player or your best game against the top-notch player. Probably want to probably want to play against an average player. Man, Good deal. Man. Now, if you could spend one hour with any person, living or dead, who would it be, and what would you do? Richard Feynman, and just talk about the theory of the universe and life in general. Now, you want to explain to some of the people who are not into that bit who Richard Feynman is? Uh, Richard Feynman was uh, one of the uh, foremost physicists of the uh, 20th century and a great thinker and uh, generally a philosopher also. And he really he explored the, the, the meaning of the universe. Nice. nice. Now, Kind of a personal question. What just really pisses you off? Um, I would say inconsiderate people, people who, who who are so egotistical they think that the world revolves around them. Now, the next bit is the oddest place you've ever woken up, and how did you get there? This place I've woken up and how did I get there? I, I guess I guess it would be the um, uh, the middle of the Amazon uh, River, uh, just outside Manawas, uh, 30 miles, and I got there by simply uh, going on a fishing trip. Very nice, <laughs> very nice. Now you get a good perspective on this favorite game show of all time. This is when I was uh, younger. This this was back in the 50s and 60s. And uh, uh, what's my uh, the object of the show was to guess what the occupation was. I think what's my line? I think that's what might have been the title of the show. There you go. There you go. What's my line? That's yeah. a good one. Now, can you actually give an approximation of the odds of finding a needle in a haystack? No. That's one of those classic. That's one of those classic heuristic problems that, that would be given by, uh, uh, by statisticians or, or psychiatrists that show that people really don't have any idea what the odds of something are. Well, that's a great way to look at it because that's exactly why I asked the question. <laughs> so you're all set. Now, here we are at the very end of this. We have a very special segment called the lightning round. In the lightning round, you choose between two people to play heads up for your entire poker bankroll. Right. Now, you may choose them for whatever reason you want, and you can tell me that reason, or you can just choose the person straight away. My first question for you, though, are who are the four toughest poker players you've ever played against? Uh, Bobby Hoff is one. Uh, Eric Seidel is another one. Uh, John Jawander is another one. Uh, Phil Ivey is another one. Uh, some good names. Now, I'm going to give you the heads up bit. Bobby Hoff or Phil Ivey? Old school, new school. Wow, that's a tough one. I would have to go with Phil because he's much younger. All right. Jawanda or Seidel? I'd have to go with Jawanda because he's much younger. All right. Obama or McCain? I'd have to go with, now, I'd probably have to go with Obama because he's much younger. All right. Indiana Jones or Han Solo? Well, technically, uh, Han Solo was younger when he was Han Solo. So. Now, I can't help but sense a pattern here that yeah. you believe that younger players are the ones you'd rather play against because they, for what reason? To play against? Yeah. No, you you you're asking who your original question was who who would you choose to play for all your money? Yes, of of the two. Yeah. Right. So you're you're, you're now saying who would I like to play against? Yeah. Who you, would you, you choose you, to play for all your money? So you picked Ivy over Hoff because he was younger. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Now now but, but but now you're corrupting the question. You're twisting it slightly. Now you're saying who who no, who I'm, would I rather play against? 
That's what you said to me. Just yeah, now. yeah. So well, who well, who would you rather play heads up for all your money, or who would you rather play against? I'm not trying to corrupt the question. No, yeah, well, the older players. Because oh. uh, the. Just pick the older players. Oh, okay. Well, that's easy. That's yeah. All right. So you you think age has a big uh, big sign-in factor on poker? Oh, absolutely. How do you think it's affecting your game? Uh, it's deteriorating. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm just a shadow of what I was uh, like 10, 15 years ago. Right. How did you how did you deal with it? Kind of getting off track. But this is a... You just accept it. That's all. It's just a part of uh, it's just a part of growing up or growing out of existence. Fair enough. Now, getting back to the heads-up questions, we're going to go with the Dalai Lama or the Pope. Oh, just to and, and, and just to go ah. retract, I, I do have a funny incident. There are a whole bunch. I was in Ireland, and there's a whole bunch of young internet 21, 22 year old players, you know, you know, chortling on, and they were talking. And I said to them, I said, I know, you know, you look down the older players like me, and you say, oh, well, he's an older player or something like that, and, and you sort of chuckle. I says, I just want you to understand. There's a 16-year-old over there standing around somewhere looking at you guys thinking, boy, I'm going to take those old guys to the cleaner when I, I'm able to play. <laughs> so I just want you to know that's your future. Uh, do you think the future of uh, poker is going to come from the younger kids, the Internet generation, or is it going to come from drawing in a broad audience with, like, the WPT going on Fox and uh, things uh, out? I think the broad audience counts more. Or it has a stronger effect. Because if you can affect the audience in general, if you can get an audience for poker on TV... Then, then the rest follows. Just because the young players are interested in playing more poker tournaments, you're leaving out an important ingredient. They, by themselves, will not be able to generate the revenues necessary. Okay. That's a great question, or a great answer to a good question. Now, we're going to come back around to it, if you want, on the lightning round. All right. I've kind of botched it. I apologize. But uh, we're going to have a little bit of fun with the last few. So the Dalai Lama or the Pope? Uh, for what now? Play heads up for your entire bankroll. Which one would you prefer to play heads up for your entire bankroll? I think I'd have the Pope uh, for the reason I think he'd have a killer instinct. All right. Well, speaking of killer instincts, so would we go with the Pope or Charles Manson? I, well, Manson's, Manson's crazy. So... I, I would have to go with the Pope because it would be uh, he'd be intellectually more more accurate. So you want to play the tougher opponent? Yeah. Good deal. Mickey Mouse or Ronald McDonald? Mickey Mouse. The Lone Ranger or John Wayne? Uh, the Lone Ranger. Bill Gates or Donald Trump? So, I mean, who's the tougher one? Which who would you rather play against? Oh, play against Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Martha Stewart or Rosie O'Donnell? Uh, Rosie. All right. Bill Belichick or Bobby Knight? Bobby Knight. All right. Big Poppy or Manny Ramirez? Manny Ramirez. All right. And the last one, OJ or Mike Tyson? That's tough. That's a tough one. Uh... Probably Mike Tyson. All right. Dan Harrington, you're a legend, you're a winner, and you're done with Random Questions with Life's a Thanks for stopping by. We right. really appreciate it. Thank you.